just saying what it is. All right, last story, y'all. Last story is about this young woman. It's not a celebrity story, but it's about this young woman. And I'm about to get off here because I've been on here for two hours, y'all. But I've appreciated our time together. Okay. This young woman here. Charges have been filed in the deadly crash that killed three people, including two Pennsylvania state troopers. I'm Shana Humphreys. And I'm Jason Martinez. Today, we're learning more about the woman allegedly behind the wheel and suspected of drunk driving. Jeff Cole joins us live now. And Jeff, you were there as she was brought out by police Ooh, in handcuffs. Sorry, I got a pee. <laughs> I certainly was. Her name is Jayana Tanae Webb. She's 21 years old. She was walked out in handcuffs, her face shrouded by a gray hoodie, said nothing as reporters swarmed her, got into an SUV by the state police and driven off. Wearing the handcuffs of the two Pennsylvania oh, state like troopers, that. she's alleged to have run down and killed Jayana Tanae Webb of Eagleville, is walked out of Troop K in Philadelphia to a state police SUV. Did you drink that night? The 21-year-old is charged with multiple felony counts of murder in the third degree, homicide by motor vehicle while under the influence, and manslaughter in the alleged killing of state troopers Martin Mack, Brandon Siska, and a pedestrian at 1 in the morning Monday on I-95 South near the stadiums. State police say Trooper Mack, 33 years old, and 29-year-old Trooper Siska were called to 95 for a report of a man walking in the left lane southbound as they were trying to get 28-year-old Reyes Rivera Oliveras of Allentown to the safety of their vehicle. Webb is alleged to have struck them. A vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed in the left lane. Pull the, pull the strap all the way down. In between the Jersey barrier and the left lane itself traveled at a high rate of speed and struck all three individuals. See those troopers? The force of the strike sent all three men into the northbound lane where Jesus. they died. Oh, Lord. State police, southbound I-95 at Broad Street. Impossible auto accident getting the nine response from the officers. Troopers arriving on the scene <laughs> she found was witnesses trying to revive the victims, and the doors sheared off the police SUV. Webb remained on the scene in her smashed vehicle. Yeah, How much had you had to drink that night? Up. Citing two sources, Fox 29 is reported Webb was pulled over for suspected DUI before the crash some two miles away, but the troopers left her when dispatched to the man walking on the highway. Sources tell Fox 29 Webb's what? blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. Webb looks distraught as cameras and reporters swarmed her as she walked past flowers placed at the barracks in memory of the fallen troopers. Ma'am, what were you doing on the highway that night? Now, if convicted, Webb could spend nearly a lifetime in jail for the horrific crash on 95 early Monday morning that kills three, including two state troopers assigned to Troop K, the barracks behind me in Philadelphia. I'm Jeff Cole in Philadelphia. Folks, back to you. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. All right, so hold up. Can I exit? It's not letting me exit the full screen for some reason. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, so first of all, the thing that caught me about this story was this girl's like pre, okay, before the crash. She is seen tweeting on January 15th. If you ask me of this year, if you ask me, I'm the best drunk driver ever. So she got pulled over by those two cops. They let her go so that they can go and help somebody else. And then she ends up speeding, speeding off, meeting them where they were and killing them. Now, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I am not a fan of the way y'all go extra hard on people when something happens to a police officer. I can't stand that shit. I, I don't like it. You are not above the law. You are not different. You are not fucking special. If, if she killed a regular person, it should still be the same, but it's not. And I don't like that shit. I don't like that at all. As soon as somebody do something to a cop, y'all act like, you know, oh, now we're going to just do, we're going to do everything that we can. Now, if it's a regular person, then y'all are entitled to not give a fuck about the regular person. So I don't like that shit, first of all. I also feel bad for her in essence because I don't think she knew. But remember when I told y'all that Darrell Relly B was an alcoholic and y'all was like, oh, they're just young and having fun. Maybe they just had a rough life. Why do we have to call people alcoholics? Because it's the truth of the matter and y'all lie to yourselves about y'all issues so that y'all don't have to take accountability. Like this young woman who just killed two people and is probably going to go in jail for go to jail for a huge portion. Three people. I'm sorry, because she thought it was cute to be a drunk driver. She thought it was cute to the point that she tweeted about it. 
Do y'all know how I would never get my ass online and say that I'm drunk driving? And you really did that shit, which means you don't care. You thought you were going to get away with it. And like a lot of y'all, you think that you being a fucking alcoholic is not you being an alcoholic. It's just you having fun and being young. Child, the bottle don't have an age on it. There have been many a 20-something-year-olds that have died from being an alcoholic. Whether it's because it got them in an accident from drunk driving, hurt them or somebody else, or they've harmed themselves from being fucked up, then laid on their back, fell asleep, and choked on their own vomit. All kind of shit. All kind of shit happens to people when they think it's cute to drink like that and then to get behind the wheel. It's fucked up. And as much as I feel bad for that lady, I really don't because I feel like you thought that shit was cute. You thought it was okay. Just like when I told y'all that Relly B had a problem and y'all sat up there and argued me down and wanted to find all the excuses and semantics in the world to explain it away so that you wouldn't have to admit that it is what it is. It's the same situation with this girl. Somebody told her, bitch, you an alcoholic and you need to stop. And she was like, what? I'm just young, having fun. I can do what I wanted to. I'm a good drunk driver. And now look at you. You didn't kill, kill three fucking people. You didn't kill three people after they let you go on a ticket. Whoo, man, I don't even want to get behind the wheel if I, if I have just one my card lemon. Bruh, no critical thinking. Uh, no critical thinking, wanting clout, no understanding of responsibility. Like, makes no sense. Makes no sense. Yeah, she was alcoholic. You could, the girl, I mean, I know she'd been crying, but you could tell she was only 21. She was only 21. She must start drinking young, like a lot of people do, because a lot of y'all think it's okay to give y'all fucking kids alcohol and shit. And don't get me wrong. I understand the concept of don't make, don't demonize things so that your kids will feel like, oh, I want to try it. I want to try it. But some of y'all like drink with y'all kids. And I don't think that's cool. Right. She said that I was doing, uh, I got pulled over. And he said I was doing 110 in the 50. She thought that shit was funny. That wasn't, she was like repeatedly on social media laughing and giggling about being a drunk driver after we had had decades of people dying at unreal, like, you know, unreal numbers from drunk driving. And you think that shit cute. I don't feel bad for her in a sense from one alcoholic to another, but people have to hit rock bottom. And unfortunately it can be death. But yeah, that rock bottom going to end you in jail for 20 plus years now. And you 20 years old. She's not going to get out in less than 15. I'm telling y'all. All casual legal substances are normalized. Drinking daily, smoking constantly are all seen as normal fun relaxation. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. Um, there are some things that you can, you know, it, it is fun and relaxation. Don't drive. Also, there's a difference between, you know, no, I'm sorry. Drinking daily is a no. I don't care what y'all are talking about. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. You're not going to compare, you know, smoking weed to alcohol. Like a lot of people can literally heavy move function on weed. Alcohol makes your body heavy. Those are two different things to me as far as I am concerned. Now for a, a addict, it may not be different, but for me, it is different. And another thing is I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm going somewhere today, but I'm not, you know, but yeah, no, this, no drinking daily. I'm sorry, y'all. Anybody that's drinking every day is an alcoholic and they need to stop. You nobody should be drinking every day. Do y'all hear me? Nobody should be drinking every day. Nobody should be drinking alcohol every day. No, no. The weekends, you know, a couple of days out your week, you get off from work, you take your little drink, you know, you need to decompress, but you need to make it a point to have days out your week where you do not consume alcohol, period, period. Which is why you should not, you should not smoke and drive like they tell y'all not to, okay? Child, you never had alcohol or smoke? I don't trust you. Yeah, I don't trust y'all non-vice having motherfuckers. Don't get me wrong now. I, I, I'm not judging from the standpoint of, oh, don't do it. No, I'm just saying that you can do it and not make excuses for people being extremely irresponsible with their drug and alcohol use. Stay your ass at home. Get a motherfucking lift. Get a motherfucking Uber. But don't be out here killing people. Mary Jane can help with cancer and body pains. Alcohol doesn't. They are not the same. Come on now. 
Come on now with my anxiety. <laughs> I'm a drinker, but I couldn't drink every day. It's tired. That's what I don't know how you can do that. Y'all, I literally can feel how hard it is for me to work out depending on how much I've drank. That's why I'm like, no, any, 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 and then that shit will make you feel the way you get headaches, your body feel heavy. It is not the same thing. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Drinking makes me sleepy. Smoke weed every day. Uh, that girl is doing life. Oh, I drink once in a while, but never smoked. I think everybody should, you know, if they can, you know, try, try, try a little mint every, you know, just, you don't even have to smoke. If you live somewhere where you can get like the mints and, and pills and gummies and all of that, get you just, just a little one, you know what I'm saying? Get you a little one, little half of one, see how you feel. Cause I feel like people don't know how much God has already put things on earth to help us and aid us in depression and anxiety issues that we have. Alcohol is something that, yeah, you know, it can take the edge off, but you have got to keep that shit in check. Y'all know I was raised by a functioning alcoholic. My mom was like, don't tell people that. I'm like, why? It's the truth. He was an amazing person, but he was a black man born in 1958. He was going to be a functioning alcoholic no matter how you slice it. Uh, who had a kid at 18, married the woman, raised them, was a single parent, kept a job, kept taking care of people, was the head of a household in a real fucking way, protected everybody, was friends with all the people you need to be friends with to protect your kids from going to jail. So <laughs> I'm just saying my dad did a lot. My dad did a lot. So at the end of his day, after getting up at four o'clock in the morning, if he wanted to have some crown and he still was going to get up the next day and do it all over again, nobody was going to begrudge him that. But when he got lung cancer, he had to cut back on his drinking as well. Okay. So I, I'm just telling y'all what I know because I've been, y'all, New Orleans people, Louisiana people, y'all, we drink. That's why I know what alcoholism looks like versus recreational drinking. You know what I'm saying? Like there is a difference, okay? And I was raised by a functioning alcoholic. So I know, okay? I know. And I watched how my, my daddy was a functioning alcoholic to the point that I would, my daddy would go sit at the bar down the street from my mom's salon and he would slow drink one or two drinks that whole night. And my daddy drank the same drink every, every time he drank, he drank the same drink, crown on ice. And because I now drink crown, I know that you can have one, two crowns and it not fuck you up like that. Especially if you was a, you know, a big man like my dad was. And I mean, tall. So he would have one, maybe two drinks, give him a little tip, not drunk. See my mama and me drive past that bar on our way to get on the interstate to go home. He then go and wrap his bill up, go home and follow, you know, drive home, follow us home and then proceed to drink until he passed out or he would just go to bed. You know what I'm saying? But normally he would get him another drink and those drinks would do him in drunk and then he just go to sleep. So I always saw my father get drunk right before going to sleep. Not so he can get up and drive anywhere. Never that. Never saw him out in the streets drunk. Never saw him like not handling his liquor out in public. Anytime my daddy was drunk to the point where he wasn't like all the way coherent is because he was on his way to the bed. So when I say I know what alcoholism looks like, I know. And then I had an uncle slash cousin because he was my dad's cousin. But because of the age, you look at him like an uncle. Um, he used to drink when he got up in the morning, y'all. That was real alcoholism to me because my daddy didn't start drinking until he got off from work. In the, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm up at 4 o'clock in the morning. So the last drink is 10 p.m. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm not drinking again until I get off from work at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm drinking between 5 and 10. I'm out like a light. I didn't did everything I need to do. And then I'm up again at 4 o'clock in the morning. Do you hear me? <laughs> So I, I know what alcoholism looks like, y'all. And people be taking way too, y'all really be out here thinking that it's cool because it's accepted. And it's like, no, bro, alcohol is not to be played with. It's not. It's not. My father would hide a bottle under our juba. He worked, took care of our family. We didn't want for anything. But he is the same man who killed my mother. Ooh, girl. Don't tell me that. That hurt my feelings. Child, my daddy didn't hide no bottle. That bottle was sitting right there on the table. Okay, at the beginning, what in the Britney Spears are they trying to do to Wendy Williams? My dad never took cold medicine. He also had a little drink. He's been three, uh, he's been sick three times in his life. And he's almost 70. That's another thing. Not drinking and smoking and all of that really does wonders for your health and living longer. My dad had a glass or two of wine after work every night, but I never saw him drunk. And that's fine too. They say that like, you know, wine and all of that is better, but you hard drinking motherfuckers, that's different. And I'm telling y'all, my dad didn't drink wine. My dad drank 
crown on rocks. Yeah, Mill. Uh, yes, Mill is a functional alcoholic. She has to have a drink every night to go to bed. Yeah, no, that's not good. Literally have uh driving tipsy. Did it once, never again. <laughs> Girl, scary shit. Yeah, no, I I. To me, tipsy is for when you're getting driven home. But like normally, like one drink won't do anything to me like that. It won't put me in a tipsy mode. Whatever the in-between is, child, if I'm below the point, then I'm good. But usually when Lyric and I go out, I have probably driven home more drunk than I wanted to be one time, y'all. And that because that shit, that shit like caught, like ran up on me. When I got in my car, I was fine. By the time I got on the bridge, I was like, whoa. I say, pray for me, Lord. This will never happen again. And I got home safe, thank God. But I didn't even mean for it to happen like that. I had a little bitty top. Like, I don't know if y'all have ever been to like some Italian restaurants. At the end of the night, they have liqueurs that you can have like with dessert. I had a liqueur shot and wasted. And then was like, oh, they gave me another one. So I finished that one. You supposed to slow sip that shit. But I didn't feel like I needed to slow sip because I wasn't drunk. I wasn't tipsy, nothing. So I just drank it and went and got in my car. Child, by the time I got on the fucking interstate and was driving over the bridge, I was just like, oh, no. All right, bitch, breathe <laughs> and focus and slow the fuck down so you can make it home. That was I said that would never happen to me again. And before that, I have never driven drunk because I don't I don't like that. I don't like the feeling of being drunk like that. When I'm drunk like that, I want to be in here. Do you hear me? Yeah, your grandma have a bill for breakfast. That's terrible. Ooh, ooh, her, her ass that reflux. I get you, Bonnie. Same here. My mom was an RN. We worked 12, 16 hours. She was come home, clocking to a pint of Paul mess on VSOP every night, seven days a week. And you understand why, especially once you become an adult, you understand why your parents was drinking the way they was. Life is hard. <laughs> these jobs, especially black people, these microaggressions by white people at these fucking jobs, kids aggravating your people in traffic on the way home, people at the grocery store, child, all kind of stuff will aggravate the fuck out of you and nothing will help better. There have been times when we have been here, I was like, no, I need a drink. I'm not going anywhere, but I need a drink. <laughs> so I get it. I get it. But working out, doing other things to help relieve stress, help me keep that shit under, under control. Because I know I have a proclivity to become an alcoholic my damn self. So that's why, like, I'm like, no, you drank, you're not drinking again. Like, when we came home from vacation, cut it off. I had one glass of wine the other night. But ever since we've been back from vacation, we came home Monday, there has been no alcohol intake. When I was on vacation, bitch, I was drinking champagne at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 11 o'clock in the morning. Where is, I worked out already, my workout is done. Where is my Bob Marley? Okay, when we were on vacation, I live life, girl, okay? Because I don't have nothing to worry about. A tincture, yes, girl. And I love them, but they're terrible. <laughs> I think that's what it was. It was a tincture. Um, no, 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 not a tincture. It, I, I was saying what it was a liqueur, but you're right about the tinctures. I like those too. Thank you for the super chat. I almost never catch a live. want to show my support. Thank you. Thank you so much, HFG. I appreciate you. Whew, it's been a good long conversation. Two hours, y'all, almost two and a half hours. I ain't even mean to be on here this long, but I have got to go because I got to go get me some crawfish and I got to work out and I got to pee. But I love y'all. I appreciated this conversation. I appreciate y'all showing up with me today. It's 1,100 of y'all in the room. It has been a 1,000 people in here for a minute now. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all follow me on the website, bondybluesshow.com. Sign up for the website. I did a live over there this morning that is free. You can still see it if you go over to the website because I have not taken it down and we watch marriage boot camp the first look. So y'all go and check that out on the website and y'all make sure y'all are members of the website because this new laptop means I can go live with a lift. No lag. No lag. Okay, I'm excited. All right. Go and give me some crawfish at Poppy. Love y'all. Bye.